This is your WCIA3 forecast first. The Chiefs forecasting stone. Not really much happening with it. It was a beautiful day today. Just a few shadows out there from all the sunshine. The plants definitely liked these weather conditions as well. We are going to be calling for warmer temperatures, but until that happens, a very nice evening. 82 here in Champaign, as well as in Danville, 81 in Bloomington, and 78 in Watsika. Lots of sunshine from our view from Danville on our Flowing America iNet camera. Winds coming in out of the north, northeast or so, up to around 10 miles an hour. And our planet remains very comfortable this evening with clear skies, but the heat is on for tomorrow and definitely for Friday. WCI 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. A group called for one city council to back the blue. How those city leaders are responding tonight. Plus, it's been a summer tradition for more than three decades, but this celebration has been shut down. And the land of Lincoln has a new holiday. Why our 16th president is directly responsible. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. It is going to take all of us in the same room working together and talking to each other. And that's exactly what happened when hundreds showed up to Champaign City Council. Tonight, those city leaders are reacting to the concerns they heard. Good evening. I'm Jessica Coons. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Yesterday, we showed you how Back the Blue Champaign County called on the council to respect and support officers. City leaders say they are taking this conversation seriously. WCI3, Sarah Lehman, live in front of the city building. And Sarah, they say this conversation is not over. Jennifer, Jessica, they plan to take what they heard last night and make solutions. Last night, right in this building behind me, city council members heard almost four hours of discussion, so they have a lot to work with. Almost 24 hours ago, hundreds of people gathered inside of Champaign's city building. Most of them were there to back the blue. What I saw was a call for unity. What I saw was a call for investment in Garden Hills. What I saw was a call for an investment in people. People with Back the Blue Champaign County brought up concerns with gun violence and police safety. They want police to have more resources, and they even suggested council members do ride-alongs with officers. Neighbors from Garden Hills also talked about issues they see, like a lack of street lights and a lack of money for certain areas. They say that's dangerous all around. Mayor Deb Finan says it was nice to see people coming together. For me, I see that as the seed of us as a community um, continuing to come together to work together for um, the best for our community members, for our police and our police department. City leaders say they're working to figure out how to use American Rescue Plan money. They say they can make a more informed decision when people give their input. In the midst of everything that's going on and everybody walked around and said, hey, you know, city council do your thing. But the people came out as they've come out in previous times. We have the, the, the leg work, we have the data, real live data, to then to justify and do what's necessary to improve our community. Finan says she knows things won't be fixed or changed overnight, but she says she knows if anyone can do it, Champagne can. It is a task with a high bar, but it is one that I know as a community that we are, we are capable of reaching. Both Kyles and the mayor say conversations like the ones that happened here last night need to continue to happen in the community. They say that's the only way things will be brought to their attention and ultimately how things can change. Reporting live in Champaign, I'm Sarah Lehman, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Sarah, thank you so much. More shots fired this time in Urbana. Police were called to the north side of the city last night. It happened at Goodwin and Eads. They blocked off the area and had several evidence markers in the street. No one was hurt. And Decatur police say they've been called to a half dozen reports of gunfire in just the last two days. A woman was hurt in the area of Pine and Main last night in one of those. Police say she was shot in the stomach. She is expected to survive. Fire damaged two homes and burned down a shed in Sangamon County today. This happened on Farmingdale Road just west of Springfield. Nobody was hurt. Neighbors say the shed caught fire after one of the neighbors started burning leaves and sticks and that fire was left unattended. The state fire marshal is investigating. One person was taken to the hospital after a crash between a car and motorcycle. That happened today at the corner of Curtis Road and Cherry Hills Drive in Champaign. No word on how that motorcyclist is doing as of tonight or if any tickets were issued. 
Another scam is going around this night time. It seems to be targeting people in Westville. Michelle Burks is the billing clerk for Westville. She says she got two phone calls from customers today. Both say they got a call from an Illinois number. The person on the other end prompts them to press a number to get a refund on their gas bill. Burke says these calls are not coming from them. There's no programs out there available for money back or there's no incentives. There, there's nothing whatsoever. Gas bills rose in February in Westville and Burks is afraid these scammers are targeting people in the village because of that. They don't know what happens if you press a button for a refund, but there's no program for you to get any money back. They say you should just hang up. A street festival that's been around for decades has come to an end. The Decatur celebration has filed for bankruptcy. WCI3's Jamie Mays is with us. Jamie, they just couldn't recover from the pandemic. That's right, Jennifer. The Decatur celebration took a hit last year and just wasn't able to rebound. The board of directors says they can't afford to put the event on each year. Each year, the street festival brought in about $100,000 for nonprofits. Last year, staff say they were getting ready for their 35th anniversary and for what they thought would be the best production they have had so far. But like so many other events, the pandemic changed those plans. The festival came to an end. It maybe has run its course, but I believe there are some great people in this community that could pull together and come up with uh, a new event that will be just as successful and just as great in the future. But leaders say Decatur still has more to offer, and although the festival is over, they are confident there's still more to come. The board says there's still opportunities for families to enjoy the Devon Amphitheater, Splash Cove, and other events through Decatur Area Arts Council. It's not a replacement for the Decatur celebration, but an alternative. Back to you, Jennifer. Glad there are some options. All right, thank you. I have to say tournament action is heating up where we are there live as our Central Illinois teams fight for that state title. Also tonight. No longer can a child grow up in Illinois without learning about Juneteenth. That's because there's a new state holiday. Why this Saturday will be recognized as National Freedom Day. And it's very comfortable out here in our weather garden. We have a temperature for a high today of 84 degrees. Coming up, we are going to be calling for more in the way of heat and humidity for the next few days. Some storms, but cooler weather is on the way after all that, after the break.